And in your music, you also mentioned that you kind of, you connect the Lithuanian, Hungarian and Japanese culture as well. Um, so which parts of the culture maybe are in there and how do the fact that you're from different countries, from different cultures, how does that uh, shape your music? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bad <Bella. laughs> So <laughs> we're like, oh no, now we we talk too much. Now we have to put it in <laughs> context. <laughs> With the Japanese, I think we kind of like explained in the beginning that it, it because the instruments, like and in the instrument I made in Japan, and after that six month period, I was really like. Like very highly influenced by the culture and the music and I research a lot and like the whole even improvisational aspect of the of the of our ensemble I think was a bit coming from the Japanese culture and then like the whole things like being permanent and being very temporary and kind of like listening to each other and then like the whole concepts of of how we improvise uh, so till this day it still remains in our music. It's just sort of a bit to like a lower level. Uh, and then I think just instrumentation used and how like the intention of using music, it was the Japanese part of it, I think. Uh, it's not like in the way of like, oh, we're using only like uh, traditional Japanese instruments and sampling, I don't know, kotos and wearing kimonos on stage. But it was more of like, a, yeah, as I said, it's more of like, idea of how Japanese approach music was very present mm -hmm. in, in, in our uh, creative aspect of making music. Uh, also, I think drum-wise, we actually quite often used taiko drums, just because I think it used, like it was kind of working out really well with uh, with Maya's vocals and what we wanted to do. And yeah, uh, it just had like really nice, deep, punchy sound so we use a lot of taiko drums and yeah so that's the japanese aspect of it uh lithuanian so i'm just lithuanian so i guess <laughs> no, i don't know but it's like <laughs> lithuanian aspect of it i think at the beginning we kind of like thought that it would be a bit like i thought i would bring more of lithuanian traditional music into it uh but it didn't really like we didn't really go that much of like into the Lithuanian folk music, uh, so yeah, I don't know like how to say actually Lithuanian music being very much present uh, in, in there. Um, let's think. Maybe there was something. There was an artist that you we were looking at as his inspiration, but I just can't remember that you put on. We we had like a kind of big up. So yeah, there was like. This woman who actually lives in Netherlands. No, she actually lives in Belgium. Sorry, Antwerp. Uh, so she, like her name is Indre Jurgedevich Wittje. So she does like mm -hmm. experimental. Uh, so she plays Kankles, uh and then she sings and also combines. Like she does pretty much like very similar thing to what we were doing just with Lithuanian folk music rather than Hungarian. Uh, so there was like a lot of influence from her, uh, how she, but and then interestingly, her influences come from like Indian stuff, whereas like ours from Japan. Anyway, but yeah, so it's we were influenced a lot by her whole idea of working, but it's not really like the thing in folk music. She just how she worked with the traditional music. Uh, but yeah, we were yeah we wanted to do like some. We always were interested in playing with like languages and stuff and we wanted to, to mm -hmm. introduce Lithuanian language at some point but I think it just sort of always was a bit tricky because it's either Maya singing very interesting Lithuanian <laughs> accent, very interesting accent. Yet, but 
we haven't tried yet, but oh, or, or me trying to like fit in with Maya stuff, but then we have our singing, let's say singing styles, yeah, were very different. So I think it kind of was a bit uh, difficult to to implement. Um, so yeah, because in my own music, I use quite a lot of Lithuanian sort of, not quite a lot of, but like. I take inspiration from Lithuanian folk music, so I thought maybe I will bring that into this mix, but it kind of, it was crowded already with, uh, so yeah. And then Hungarian folk, I think, Maya, you can definitely better explain than I can. Yeah, I mean, like, also with Hungarian, well, with the kind of vocals, it's always I've really enjoyed and it's been fun to just mix languages or, or switch between Hungarian and English, which are both used. And also Hungarian Hungarian folk music has this like very infinite like I don't know like like this underlying sadness <laughs> which is just like mm-hmm. I think it like really lives in the nation's heart not to be a, like not to generalize but it's just it's more like not even sadness it's like a very like strong kind of like melancholy which I never really realized how strong it was in like Hungarian music until I moved away and I was like wait like if you look at it all of it as a whole like there's always even if it's like a pretty beautiful repository song there's always some kind of like I don't know like dark creek in the background like like a stream of, of, of melancholy so I think that kind of is brought back in a lot of the music um, but I think from me specifically like what how Gorda was explaining that We've always been some kind of like somewhere in between um, art and music, and always like kind of on the precipice. I think we, even when we first met, we were both kind of like moving from one culture to another, to another, and always being on the precipice of, you know, mm-hmm. never being either like English enough or Hungarian enough. Like you can't go either place and be perfectly there. So you're kind of just like floating on the boundaries of like these cultures, and then you, the more places that you go, the more Times you kind of split apart and you're just balancing on the lines in between all of these cultures and it's just a web so that's kind of how I know that sounds more conceptual than an actual answer but that's how I kind of feel like our music is it's just like taking mm-hmm. little bits and bobs from here and there but never truly being representative of any of the things or trying to be any of them wholly in a way I don't know if that makes yeah. yeah I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I think we mm-hmm. started yeah I think when we started it was a bit like oh you like Maya were like you were like, like oh I will use like Hungarian songs and I was like oh I will use this Japanese instrument and like play it in the final way anyway <laughs> that <I'm> not... <laughs> but then it kind of like it's like the whole but we talked to me in the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. In the beginning. So I said, we like we talked in the beginning. No, beginning. Anyway, so uh, fuck. Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, about how we like that we moved. And we kind of like moved, but we progressed. So I think the whole idea of like how we use the tradition really progressed with us, because then mm-hmm. it was not anymore. Oh, it was just like this Japanese instrument I'm using. It's actually like getting like more into like a concept of how I'm using it. And with you, might I think it was at least from what I was sensing was that it was starting from like using Jap- not uh, Hungarian folk songs. Purely at the beginning when we were improvising, yeah, but then I'll it was kind of like, like sampling them. Yeah, but, like, yeah, so yeah, sort of like <laughs> yeah, so it was more like yeah, so, and then and with our recorded songs, you were already like make like making your own lyrics and and it was kind of like moved from being purely folk to like just sort of influenced by it and just evolved in its own thing uh so i think with like traditions as well and like with the traditional music in general i think that's how like i think traditional music also kind of works quite well because then you just sort of 
use it as inspiration and evolve it rather than just like stick to like very staple aspects of it. And I'm quite like I'm, mm-hmm. I'm quite proud of us like kind of growing with this whole concept and actually uh, getting on the other side with like making it our own thing rather than just like being like this is purely like folk song and this is purely like Japanese way of doing things. It's like we involve and we I don't know if we like I don't think we all we we could count as like a traditional music anything at this point. We just hide influence at this point. Uh but in the in the beginning it was very kind of from the start it was very kind of we very doing literal, this wasn't it? Like yeah. Yeah it was very literal. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah.